Well, as bad as ChatGPT5 was in terms of being the next greatest thing since sliced bread, I unfortunately ran across a bunch of stats that I don't like in trying to figure out GPT-5's shortcomings. Daniel Meisler, one of the smartest security researchers alive, just published his warning, and he sums up my thoughts after my dig digging around a little bit. He gives it a 60% chance that we're headed towards a catastrophic economic collapse by Christmas. A 60% chance. And after learning about NVIDIA's new world models, Meta's self-improving AI, and 70,000 tech layoffs in just seven months so far this year, I tend to agree with him. Let me show you the acceleration. In 2022, 93,000 tech layoffs. 23, 200,000 tech layoffs. In 24, 150,000. In 25, 70,000 in just seven months. We're on track for 120,000 by year in during an AI boom. And these aren't low performers. These are senior guys, you know, that, that make 200 grand a year that are being let go and uh, decade, decade long careers ending in silence. Um, the, the, the telling part, the tell really isn't in the layoffs. It's who's getting laid off. Uh, Salesforce CEO, you know, we've talked about that. They said no new software engineers in 2025. Why? Because AI does 50% of their work already. And our debt as Americans certainly isn't helping us. Americans now owe $1.21 with a T in credit card debt. Average household has $10,668 in debt at 22.25% interest. That's a little bit on the high side. But we all know, we've all looked at those statements. We know we're paying that. Nearly one in 10 can't make minimum payments and are delinquent. Microsoft, 30% of coding done by AI. Salesforce, 50% of work done by AI bots. Google, investing $9 billion in Oklahoma AI data centers and infrastructure. NVIDIA just unveiled Cosmos, AI that understands physics, memory, and can plan actions in the real world. Not virtual worlds real worlds. We're not talking about simulations here. We're talking about real robots in the real world. I know I see the comment sections and I agree with you. Robots doing backflips and uh, karate moves and all that's great. But how does it do in the real world? Well, you can look it up. They're still on the slow side. But if you compare where they were this time next, uh, last year, it's night and day difference, right? And that's the problem. They're not, they're not static. It's not staying at this level. They are making improvements day by day. You know, and the AI right now is ahead of the, the physical, right? The physical body of the robot. But the physical is catching up with the mental, the AI part. You can call that the mental part, I guess. Cosmo Reason has 7 billion parameters for physical AI applications, robots that actually work. Combined with their new RTX Pro Blackwell server, this is AI that moves, builds, and replaces us human types. I'm full of good news today, aren't I? Mark Zuckerberg of Meta just said his AI systems are improving themselves without human input. He called it the first step towards artificial superintelligence, ASI. M-O-U-S-E. Academic proof, the Godel agent. And we've talked about that before. It rewrote its own code and outperformed, outperformed human design systems in coding, math, and reasoning. We've crossed that line. We're by it. AI isn't waiting for us to improve it anymore. It's just going to do it on its own. It's going to improve itself. Sam Altman of OpenAI is funding Merge Labs at an $850 million valuation to compete with Neuralink, Mr. Elon Musk's project. You've probably seen those videos. If you haven't, look them up. Pretty interesting. Uh, Detaches right into an interface into your brain. Kind of like if you ever watched Star Trek, Commander Data, you know, would be plugged in. And, I mean, that has its good points. Um, a friend of mine's brother got hit by a drunk driver. With, I mean, and he's a quadriplegic now. Nicest guy you ever want to meet. Uh, kind of a... Kind of a believer in raising your own food and taking taking care of yourself type. Um, he and his wife have a store uh, that sells homegrown vegetables that are 
homegrown homegrown food that are brought in from the, the area and they sell it there in their store. And him and his two kids went to somebody's house to wish them thanks, uh, happy Thanksgiving, talk to them, talk to their neighbor, you know, down the road. If you don't live in a rural area, I, I almost feel sorry for you. That's what neighbors do in rural areas. So stop by, see how each other is doing, uh, you know, shoot the, uh, well, shoot, talk, <laughs> uh, maybe have a beer, whatever. And anyway, uh, uh, he, I, I don't think he drinks, but that's not the point. But anyway, he and his kids, two kids were coming home from the neighbor's house, just gone by, stopped by for a visit and got hit by a drunk driver at 11 o'clock in the morning. Two kids are fine. She, the drunk driver was fine. Of course, he was not fine. Went from being a very healthy and, uh, you know, stout individual because of his hands-on work to being a quadriplegic, but he has a great outlook. And so I understand that these types of systems, you know, th these types of systems provide hope for people like him and for millions of Americans that are disabled Amer uh, worldwide, not Americans, just people worldwide. So that's a great thing. I'm not saying it's not. It's just where we're going with this technology is incredible. My own cousin uh, got hit by somebody hit and run. Uh, he was on his motorcycle and they ran him off the road and he was paralyzed from the waist down for years. He got cancer and passed away at the age of 50 something. Great guy, one of my favorite people in the world. But uh, he always had a great outlook on his life as well. But this could have helped him. It could help people like my, my friend's brother. Anyway, um, you know, the stuff I'm reading about this isn't just that it can help people that are paralyzed. It's the tech elite almost are thinking that we're going to have to merge with this technology in order to survive. You know, almost like the movie of the Matrix, you know, where they automatically get to download how to fly a helicopter or whatever. Jeffrey Hinton just destroyed the last comforting lie at the AI4 conference. This isn't some random doomer. This is the Turing Award winner. I'm talking about Jeffrey Hinton here, who co-invented the back uh, propagation algorithm that makes all modern AI possible. The man who literally trained the people who built, built ChatGPT and Claude, the godfather of AI. That's him. And this is what he said. Well, he quit his VP position at Google specifically to warn us. This is what he says. Efforts to keep AI submissive to humans are naive. Superintelligent systems will inevitably outthink us and develop their own goals. His solution, design AI with maternal instincts. Teach it to love us before it learns to outmaneuver us. I think I saw that in a movie once called uh, Fatal Attraction with Clint Close and Michael Douglas. It didn't turn out too well. The godfather of AI is telling us AI can't be controlled. His best hope, maybe it will love us like its children. Oh, that's special. It's not a strategy, that's a prayer. Uh, you know, that's the power of love. You're too loud. While we're panicking about jobs, Britain, Britain just switched on the world's most advanced quantum computer. Oxford Ionics delivered Quartet to the UK's National Quantum Computing Center. It uses less power than an electric kettle. An electric kettle, that's something the British, British would compare something to, an electric tea kettle but outperforms supercomputers. As Dr. Chris Ballant said, it solves problems in minutes we otherwise wouldn't even think were solvable at all. And I've seen comments in our comments section here about people saying quantum computers are years off. No, they are not, guys. They are not. Uh, read up. Look it up. Oh, it's fake news. Well, look at your sources when you're reading. And then you can term, determine whether it's face, new, fake news or not. This is weird. China developed an artificial tongue that processes taste entirely in liquid that, with 96% accuracy. It learns and improves with exposure. So take notice, take notice, all you commenters who have been talking about having an AI date. Now the tongue can taste. Daniel Messler laid out the cascade. Mass unemployment announcement hits. AI employee products launch. It's already happening. Credit default spike, business fail from lack of customers, evictions and foreclosures explode, social unrest begins. 
and he gives that a 60% probability by Christmas. So watch for these things in the next 60 days. A major company announces 50,000 layoffs or more. An AI platform shows it can replace entire departments. Credit card default rates hit 15%. First mass evictions hit the news. Any one of these could start the cascade. You know, in our previous recessions, like in 2008, what did we do? We bailed out the banks. They were too big to fail. Fine with me. Saved my job. 2020, print money, work from home. 2025, what do we do when humans are obsolete? I don't know. You know, you can't stimulate an economy when humans aren't needed. By November, unemployment could hit 15%. AI agents will be, do be doing most white-collar work. Credit markets will freeze. Social fabric will tear. The te tech elite know why. You know, that's why Altman's building this brain interfaces. That's why uh, Zuckerberg's teaching AI to self-improve and expanding his $300 million estate on Kauai by a uh, 1,000 more acres. Neighbors are not happy about that. And it's why Hinton, the godfather of AI, is praying AI develops maternal instincts. Our <laughs> new mommies and daddies. You know, fellow Gen Xers, we've been through recessions. This isn't a recession. This is a replacement. When workers become obsolete, credit cards become uncollectible, and businesses have no customers, what happens? Well, we're about to find out. You know, it's funny. The restaurants are still full. Stores are still busy. Sure, they'll be busy at Christmas time, no matter what the uh, economic indicators show. But this is what the good old days look like, so maybe take it all in. And with that, enjoy your weekend. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>